It's been so long, I forgot how to do Hello? It. Hello! Welcome back. Hello, hello. I can't um, believe you're talking. I'm about to go back up there and get my food. I got 45 minutes until my dad goes to bed, so. Alright, let's get this show on the road. Okay. Let's go, let's, let's be quick. Let's be quick, human beings. Quick, quick, quick. Okay, y'all gonna have to forgive me because I had to prep for this last weekend. Mm. So it's been a week. <laughs> um, I have notes, obviously, but it's been a week and I do better when I prep right before. Yeah. Because I'm more comfortable in what I planned. It's more fresh in my memory. Do, do you still want me to set up the stream then, or? Go for it if you want to, but we need we need to get started. Okay, well, I might, I might just chill. Does anybody need to see it? Nope. No. All right, then I'm, uh, I'm going to chill on it then. Okay, awesome. All right, so, just to clarify what a one-shot is, this has nothing to do with our other campaign. Awesome. The only relativeness here is it's in the same world maybe happening at the same time maybe happening before maybe happening after probably happening before um <laughs> but it's fine um there is going to be a lot of theater of the mind in this because one shot i didn't want to make a ton of npcs so just uh you know roll with it I know. use your listening ears and uh, I'm really hoping I don't have to nerf much of anything, so I'll be fine. So, we are going to begin our story by introducing that we are beginning in the, it's, it's like a village thing. It's not like the capital, but it's like it's a thriving village of Arortstead in Nassuntold, um, which is the hold that Joan's family takes care of overseas. <laughs> um, uh, something that your characters would know for sure about this hold before even starting is that this was, in this particular region, this hold was the first established hold to like actually have like a capital and like have a name and have like laws and an army and all that nice stuff before people went off to conquer their own land and be their own little bitches somewhere else um <laughs> so regardless of where your characters are from, they're, they don't have to be from this particular village, regardless of where they're from, wherever they are in the world, on the map, it doesn't yeah. matter. Because as they go to sleep, all in the same night, all under the same sc starry sky. Doesn't matter what time they go to sleep because I'm gonna tell you my girl's a prostitute, so she probably doesn't go to bed till 4 a.m. But it doesn't matter because <laughs> y'all go to sleep. And in what almost feels like a dream, your characters wake up almost in like a feverish state in a small temple and it's like a, a rural kind of temple there's no walls it's very made out of the surrounding areas but the things are placed very deliberately so the trees have fallen very deliberately uh, bushes have been grown deliberately and you can see even just looking around when you first come to consciousness and you sit up that the trees seem to curve and what looks like from your perspective because your character doesn't have an eagle eye view to be a, a perfect circle um you know with like branches here and there but it's a perfect circle 
So if we have four characters, try to like drag and drop your characters onto the map, kind of in like the four corners of the center. <laughs> Close enough. You're <laughs> close enough. <laughs> it's never easy to do this right. Um, Eric, do you remember how to drag and drop? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so as your characters sit up and they, you know, go through almost what feels like their normal waking up routine. Whether it be, you know, kind of like having to like squint your eyes a bit because your eyes are sore when you first wake up, or you're like a, a rise and shine type of person where you just sit up and you're just like, oh, and like stretch and over dramatic, or you just like dart up, no matter what, no matter what their natural way of waking up is, this is where they wake up. They don't recall falling asleep here, they don't recall ever being here. They don't know where they are, but they're here. So, go in with your character reactions. Okay. Uh, Bajor Stan, or whatever the hell. Be, I'm gonna just call him Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn sits up. Bjorn opens his eyes to see the canopy and trees and birds. And he blinks twice and takes a deep sigh and says, where the hell am I? And sits up. Um, Magnus, well, he wakes up, you know, kind of leisurely, looks around. Uh, he's woken up, you know, outside a lot. So he doesn't really recognize, he's like, wait a minute. I don't, I don't know where I am. Uh, I didn't fall asleep here, I think. No, no, I didn't. Definitely not. And then he kind of stands up and he dusts himself off and he just kind of he's just looking around some more, trying to get his bearings together. Okay, and then Toril, I guess she just she wakes up very vampire esque. She had she probably had her arms crossed over her eyes. And She's just, she's just given the air a smell, doesn't smell like her shack at all. She's kind of squinting around. The shack's pretty dark and this is outside. So, oh, very confused. And then just, she notices as she looks around a little closer, there's three other people here. Just, she gets to her feet. She dusts off very gothic style raven feathered dress observes the other people around her so euphora who is a very bright peppy looking little lady she kind of she sits up and she like has one of those sleep masks and she has to like pull her sleep mask up and she's looking around she's just like I don't remember doing any, like, voyeurism last night. <laughs> I was just looking around, pulls the stick out of her hair, and uh, as she's looking around, some, some of the flowers that are in the area seem to shift and gravitate towards her, almost as if she were the sun and flowers grow facing the sun, trying to absorb that light but she's used to that so like she doesn't react to it she's looking around she looks at these people looks at herself and is just like doing a checklist in her head like okay i have clothes on okay <laughs> okay <laughs> i didn't fall asleep here though like she's having a little bit of a moment but as your characters are waking up <laughs> They get kind of, just, it hits them suddenly, and it comes with a headache. It's just like a, a smack of just a, a, a vivid memory of what their dream was. And their dream would have, whether or not their, your characters know 
like their heritage, obviously your discretion, but their dream would have showed their respective god or goddess pairings um, standing before what looked like a large sphere with multiple smaller spheres inside of it organized in um, a very deliberate way. So it would have been a large oval and then a smaller oval on the inside and then spheres, smaller ones running through it and then Xing across it. And whether or not your heritage allows it for knowing who your parent is and like recognizing them in your dream. I'm not going to make you roll for that because you guys would have decided that in your backgrounds. But if your character has no idea what their heritage is, they would be confused as to who that person was in their dream. If they're aware of their heritage, then they would probably know, but their reaction to it would probably vary. And as of right now, obviously no one knows they just had the same dream. All I know is they woke up here at a temple thing in the forest with some strangers. So this vision comes with a throbbing headache. Kind of immediate, kind of like a brick hitting you in the face. Very deliberate, very mean, violent. Is, is it like, um, it's, it's, it's still with us, or did we just, like, is it, is it gonna fade anytime soon, or? Um, as of right now, you are, you're suffering with this, this migraine. Oh, boy. Tori's confused and not having a good time. Is there a way to get out of here? Um... So, I mean, in your line of sight right now, the obvious, unless you want to make a, like, a perception roll, the obvious is it looks like no. No. Okay. Tori is going to perception. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, Tori does notice that there is a clearing through the trees. Um, it seems to just kind of go off, but as it stands right now, she doesn't know where she is to begin with. So all she sees is a clearing. Where it goes, nobody knows. And I'll put like an X thing over here where the clearing kind of is. What's this uh, metal thing that we're all standing around? Um, so, <clears throat> without any form of rolls, it looks like just a, almost like a monolith kind of thing. Um, there are symbols kind of etched into it, runes perhaps. Um, they might be religious, they might be from some ancient language. They could be anything, but you see that there are etchings in it. Um, but yeah, it's like a monolith. Faceless monolith with etchings. Could Tori make like an arcana check? See if that's um, If you do an arcana check, it's going to be specifically looking for the arcane arts. So if that's what yeah. you want to d try to look for, then yeah. Yeah, because that's like, she's proficient in that. So okay. I guess that'd be the first thing she'd be thinking about. Okay. Okay, so you, you can tell that this monolith isn't magical. Um, the, the runes themselves are nothing related to magic. So even with your nat 20, since you specifically rolled Arcana, all I can tell you is that it's not magic at all. Okay. Yeah. 
Right. So, uh, <clears throat> in pain and wincing, Bjorn notices that this young lady seems to be investigating and gathering information. So, he comes over and he says, uh, hello, how are you? I have a headache. Who are you? I'm Bjorn. I too have a headache. You seem to <laughs> you seem to be the most observant of us. Is there anything that you can tell me about this place? Well, from what I have on the screen, this object in front of us middle is not magic it's just very runey heaven thick and upon closer inspection i gather that clearing over there she points over to where that yellow mark the opening of a forest that might be an exit but i have no idea where i'm at or how Okay, I, uh, Mion says, thank you, and, uh, I have no idea where we're at either, and I question if we should not try and figure out why we were brought here before trying to leave, because there could be consequences of us leaving. Hmm. She just, she just looks at the other two, she yeah. just kind of like... <laughs> points at both of them. She just makes a gesture for them to come on over. Jill looks at the, uh, what is her name? Uh, Euphoria and thinks to himself, she looks high. <laughs> <laughs> she has flowers about her. <laughs> he, takes, he takes two remembering who his father is and what his father told him way back in the day he is cautious around flowers roots and plants Jess do you want to go first? yeah okay so uh, I have one question first Hi. Uh, is Magnus's bird here is Helga oh, yes here? yes okay, Helga. Okay. Helga is perched on top of the monolith okay 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 so he kind of like when he was hit with this headache he was crouching down but when they called for him like called for them to come on over he looks up and he sees Helga sitting on the monolith and he just he he reaches out his arms he's waves her over because he's like I don't want you places to get um Helga flies on over and comes to perch on your shoulder. Yeah. And uh can he make a perception check? What do you want to like what what are you perceiving? Uh the monolith. Okay. Okay. Mm. Just so you guys know, um <clears throat> for rules, since no one has advantage or disadvantage right now, I take the first number. Unless, like, with Tori, she's proficient in Arcana, so I took her advantage on that. So everyone knows. Gotcha. Um, so, you, as a ranger, um, rocks aren't exactly your forte. Um, but you do recognize that, you know, it doesn't seem to be magical. It doesn't seem to have any form of properties that would draw anyone to it. And if anything you've seen as a ranger and as a far traveler, you may have seen the etchings before, but without a specific check, I 
can't tell you more than that. Okay. Um, so he he kind of speaks up and he goes, the, these etchings, they kind of look familiar, but I can't really pinpoint what they are exactly. Okay, so Euphora, when she gets waved over, she kind of like stands up and she has to like uh, turn around and adjust herself a little bit because she's like in a robe and whatnot and it's not flattering. <laughs> and she walks over and she kind of like tucks her hands behind her back and leans in to like look at this rock that everyone's staring at. And she's like, well. I don't know why we're just staring at a rock. We could totally just leave. I mean... Do you know where we are? Well... Not specifically, but... These, these flowers right over here... They, um... They only grow in uh, the Nessund hold, so we're probably somewhere in that hold. And I know because I'm a flower enthusiast. Oh. We all get slightly nervous at the idea of a flower enthusiast. Because flowers are pretty like me. Uh, Magnus makes us. We all get less like... nervous. <laughs> Magnus goes, hey, you know, I'm pretty. I'm pretty good with plants, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, boy. I can tell you kind of look like the type that's, like, outdoorsy. Hey! You pegged me perfectly. <laughs> and then Helga just poos. <laughs> In her head right now, she's like, I can't believe he thought that was a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> He's like this fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know that this monolith isn't magical. One of you may mm -mm. possibly recognize the runes. Um, there are two. Um, I mean, there are two other rolls that could possibly be made here. Okay, is it how tall is this monolith? The monolith. Is, uh, the monolith is taller than you. And you're like, uh, what, 6'5", six, 6'7"? Six, no, nah, I'm like 5'10". <laughs> Are you made, serious? Yeah, I made my yeah. camp smooth. Okay, alright, alright. Is Magnus the tallest? Yeah. yeah, he's, it's taller than Magnus. Oh. <laughs> okay, so, is it climbable? No, the surface seems very, very smooth except for the etchings, and it kind of comes up like a, a dome. Okay. But it's like a pointed dome, but it's still blatantly like a dome. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So could Tori make possibly uh, uh, Wow, that's a low score. Could she make a history check to see if she could figure out Exactly what this monolith is hailing. Yes, you, do, you, you could do a history check, but there's a, a role that would be better than a history check. Is it, is it Investigation? Mm -hmm. Oh, insight? No. No? Mm -hmm. Religion? Yes. Okay, that's that's not a very big number either, but Tori will roll it. <laughs> okay, so you maybe recognize like one rune to be like the Eye of Odin, like the 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 one that everybody would know, literally everybody. Okay, so Tori, even though it's probably super obvious, he points to that rune. She's like. That's the eye of Odin, if you didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just imagined a little kid going, That's 
the aisle. Oh, <laughs> and, and Yuffie, I'm just gonna call her Yuffie for now because that's easier than Euphora. She kind of gives Tori like this side glance, and she's just like, "Really? <laughs> yes. Good job. At least we're on the right track." She just she crosses her arms. And she kind of nods. And she's like, I have nothing else, though. <laughs> Other people can try to make a religion check if they would like. Okay, um... Um... Uh, Bjorn would like to do a religion check. Where do I do this religion check? It's in your skills, the long list. The long list of skills? Yes, near the bottom, because it's an R. Near the bottom? Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, right here? Yeah. Oof. Oh, okay, so... Oh, y'all didn't know my man released. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, Magnus probably sees just about the same thing as Tori. Probably notices the Eye of Odins that are more faded. Um, Bjorn, on the other hand, notices that all of these runic etchings all sim sim like symbolize the different um, gods and goddesses, uh, like the Aesir gods and goddesses. So like Odin, Frigg, Thor, Loki, the Aesir ones. Um, then they're just like they're not in any specific order. It's almost like a pattern, just like, like, like a texture kind of thing where they're just there. Like someone sat there and that's what they did. They literally chiseled away and etched them into this monolith whenever it was built. Somebody had a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> so, <clears throat> do you relay that information with the rest of the party? Yes. Bjorn uh, stops and talks to the rest of the, tells what the DM has whispered sweetly into his ear. <laughs> the, the rest of the group. He shares it with the rest of the group and lets them know what he's found out. So, so, what do we do with the, the gods? It's not magical. And uh, Yuffie is just kind of like, well, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> And she, like, leans against it and, like, puts her hand on it. Just starts, like, leaning casually on it. And is looking at her nails on her other hand. And is just like, I feel like this is just a waste of time. And while she's talking, a specific, a specific symbol, which is... Flips through my notes. Flips through my notes. Which is a falcon symbol. <laughs> starts to illuminate in a white light. It's very light, and all of the matching falcon, symbol, falcon symbols start to illuminate. Okay, so as obvious as that may seem, Tori points at this, this, this glowing, the glowing runes, and is like, hey guys, some of the symbols are glowing. You see it? <laughs> Uh, can Magnus touch the rock? <laughs> so, <laughs> as Magnus touches the rock, <laughs> didn't you pick this? Did you pick the sun god? No, I picked the nature, the hunting one, hunting oh. and Mueller. Yeah, that's hunting in winter, not na <laughs> not nature. <laughs> Okay, so this, this, the, all the symbols that look similar to a longbow begin illuminating in a, a, a dull green light. 
So Tori again, she 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 blinks a few times. She's like, oh, there it goes again. Yorn <laughs> walks up to the rock, pauses for a second, looks at a specific. Do I know which the ruins would be towards my parents? Um. Yeah, probably. Okay, so I walk up to the ruin that is toward to my parent or who I think my parent might be and I touch the rock. Who do you think your parent might be? No, I, my character knows who my parent is. Okay, he knows. Okay, awesome. Yeah, he knows. I'm saying this. Will okay. he be able to so, the is connected? Uh, uh, Bjorn walks up to the rock and deliberately places his hand over the gem encrusted silver chalice and all of the matching runes of that specific one begin to illuminate in a, a dull red light because uh, that's that's the symbol of Balder. Oh, you gave away my parents. <laughs> Damn. Now we know. <laughs> can uh can I not can my character not make the assumption that all of us are demigods? Yeah. Okay. My character makes it whispers to himself, they're all they're all gods too. Yeah, you uh, can like what we're saying isn't it doesn't equal what your character knows necessarily. Okay. Yeah. So when he whispered to himself, so that was out loud, can I say Mag can I make a roll to see if Magnus heard him whisper to him? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I can say I can say it pretty loudly. Like, okay. I, okay, Boulder is not a good whisper. Not Boulder. <laughs> is not a good whisper. Back to him and go, yo, he man, does not have that skill. You're right. <laughs> okay. okay. Girl looks so surprised that she heard him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, upon seeing all three of these folk touch the stone and glow, but not actually die or seem injured, she lowers her hand, steps forward, looks at it some more, and then she gives it a poke. She just leans her finger up. Does, is it just a quick poke, or does she, like, press her finger to it? No, she, like, she's, like, pressing a button. Okay. So as as her finger makes contact with the monolith, all the runes that kind of look like like almost like a a woman's face, but one side is like kind of like all like etched out, begin to glow in a faint purpley gray light. Edgy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's peculiar. Oh, would you look at that? This is a party. We're all glowing up, boys. <laughs> uh, Magnus just goes, uh, what now? Well, <laughs> all right, we got a glowing rock. Real awesome. And Yuffie kind well, of I mean, pulls her hand away, and she's just like, well, if all this rock does is glow, then we should just leave. <laughs> Does anything happen to her runes when she pulls her hand? They just stop glowing. They just slowly fade. Hmm. Okay, can Tori, like, lean into the rock, press her ear to it to see if it's making sounds? Perception. Perception. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh... Trying to stay on brand here with making you guys roll. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make the god Matt Mercer proud. <laughs> okay, so I want to tell you, it's just a rock. <laughs> it's, it's just, you roll the 24, it's not a nat 20, but I'm telling you, it's just a rock. <laughs> okay, so Tori just takes her hand and her ear off the rock, steps back, just kind of like shrugs I, I don't, I think we should just go. I, I don't see any reason to stay. Really cool. 
Damon looks a little disappointed that the rock didn't explode. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but he agrees. There's nothing here. There's, there's nothing here. We should not waste any more time doing whatever we are doing. Uh, Magnus, he he looks up and he's like, yeah, I think Helga's getting it. <laughs> Helga? Yeah. Okay. My owl. Is, this is Helga, guys. You don't know my name. I'm Mag Nice to meet you. We experienced a glowing rock together, so I guess that's something. Okay, hello. It was nice to meet you, too. I don't know if I, if I haven't introduced my... It's, it's totally... <clears throat> She's just she's just slowly inching towards towards that exit, that opening over there. Hey, wait! I don't think we're supposed to just take off. Like, I doubt all of us fell asleep here last night. Like, aren't you all just a little like, why the fuck am I out here in the woods? <laughs> I'm always in the woods. <laughs> I'm a hermit, so I am too. Also in the woods. <laughs> Ah, uh, wood I'm... road. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a home, and I, I still have a really bad headache, and I don't know what to do, and it's a bit of an agitating situation to say that. I just, I like the uh, idea of leaving. <laughs> okay, well, okay, well. Listen, how about we all, like, leave together, and because some of you are, like, <sighs> sad, um, <laughs> we can go to, like, whatever town is nearby, and, like, we can go to a tavern, and I'll treat you all to, like, breakfast or whatever, and, like, maybe we can, like, talk. I'm Euphora, by the way. Hello. Like, the little um, Euphoria. Yeah. Except it's yes. Euphora. But you can call yeah. me Yuffie. Okay. Or Yuff. Yuff. I'll call you Yuffie. Okay. Awesome. Right. I am Bjorn. Uh, not much about me. I, uh, I'm a hermit. I can tell. <laughs> oh my god! Boldness. <laughs> Boldness. Some guys hermit. really like it. And uh, I love to cook. Like what? Deer? No, yeah, whatever. Squirrel? I find. Deer, squirrel, duck, hamster. Oh boy, I'm treating you right now. What's the <laughs> <laughs> we have to fix this. Uh, man, a, a hamster. That does not sound like a lot, man. <laughs> it was a lot more trouble to catch than it was to eat. I can only imagine. <laughs> not one of my smarter plans, but... Well, if you're ever trying to catch a hamster again, I have an owl which kind of does that. Like, mice and stuff. Catches pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, Helga... Okay, so this, like, this bird, she just... She starts flapping her wings. She's like, let's, you know, find. She doesn't like being in one place too long. All right. I agree with the bird. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's just go. Yes. Going out of the forest that is ugly and smells yeah. bad. Getting out. <laughs> taking these guys to go get a bath. Because half of them stink. <laughs> well, so, I know I don't stink. <laughs> Leon says, I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you guys get out of the forest. Wait, where'd y'all go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> as you all head out of the forest, um, Yuffie actually is from a. The village that you're outside of, or stead. So she's just like, oh, I know where we are. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is fine. And she takes you all to the tavern. 
hopefully, to actually, like, get to know each other and yeah. eat some food. <sighs> Ooh. So y'all come to the village, and it takes you, you know, a couple hours to get there. So as you get there, it's probably midday, even though the map makes it look dark. Just don't worry about it. <clears throat> And Yuffie brings y'all inside. Bring them inside. And she just orders a uh, like a lunch platter for everybody. And a round of the best house ale. So you all get some good food. Decent ale. Probably a little more bitter than uh, usual. But it's good. It's fine. And the tavern itself is a, you know, it's just a regular tavern. It's, it's definitely no brothel house. It's it's nothing too specific. So as you're all eating, what about having a headache still? How are we on the headache? Like. Hmm. As you're eating, you kind of are starting to feel it subside. So, like, the food is helping. Thank God. Um, Eric, do you want to bring Bjorn onto the map? Oh, my bad. I was uh, trying to to relook at some of the abilities I got okay. to see which ones I could use in a fight. That's just coming. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're all in the tavern the topic eventually gets brought up about you know how weird it is that you guys all woke up there um so Yuffie probably brings it up and it's just all like so I don't remember waking up in that dirty place I don't know about you guys did you guys like sleep there last night I don't recall. Mm, no, all I remember is like, drinking and walking. And then I hit a tree. And then I was there. But I was in front of my hut when I got hit by a tree. I don't think it's Maybe possible a to get hit, hit by a tree. Hmm. Then uh, <laughs> Bjorn actually whispers really, really, really low to himself and says, then you don't know my grandmother. <laughs> Your grandma was a tree? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, Yuffie's just like, okay, well, obviously it seems like none of us like purposely were there so like like what the heck someone 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 talk about like what happened I like I need to know the details tell me everything um Magnus, you owe me I paid for lunch <laughs> Magnus he kind of leans back and he stretches his leg probably hits another chair by accident um and he goes well I mean I did have this it was a weird dream. You know, I saw a guy. I don't, I don't really know him. I mean, I, he looked familiar, but hey. Tori actually, like, kind of squints when he talks about a dream. Because now she's kind of, like, over-drinking her water. She's just, like, thinking about, like, well, you know what? I did have a weird dream. But she doesn't say that out loud. She's kind of, like, you can see it on her face that she probably remembers. Okay, so you had like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I had a nightmare too. Yeah? Damn. Well, what happened? Someone get more specific. So, since I know my my uh my guy, 
Will my dream be more pointed to him? Oh, can I, uh, would it be more obvious to, like, him than, Yeah, uh, Bjorn, Bjorn would have recognized his father in the dream. Okay. Yes. And, okay. He says that he, he had a dream about his father and then a mistletoe. A mistletoe? Yes. Uh, specifically about your father? Who is your father? Uh, beyond pauses. Weighing the options and then saying to himself, well, we're all demigod. <laughs> I can probably outrun the other three if something popped up. <laughs> <laughs> Then he looks at the, the bird, is the bird in the bar, in the uh, bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, he saw eyes the bird, he said, except for that one. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting me. So he takes a deep breath and he says, I am Bjorn, son of Boulder. Sounds fake, but okay. <laughs> She like straight up says that immediately. Like there's like literally there's not even room to breathe in between in between him saying that and her responding. Sorry is winded. She didn't have time to react. She is she is curious though. She's like a oh, son of Balder, that's a big claim. <laughs> Proof, where's your birth certificate? Where's your mama? How they meet? Like, how did, how, how, how did it happen? Did they just, like, see each other and they were like, hey, baby? <laughs> he laughs. Was it kinky? <laughs> Where is this conversation going? Yes, he, he, that's what we want to think. This is taking a uh, <laughs> taking an inappropriate turn. <laughs> he laughs and he says, uh, "He says that's just the story that my mom used to tell me." Okay, so it's fake. It's like a, a, a freaking mom's tale, ain't it? He laughs and he says, "Yes." It was like. It says, I just wanted to live in the mood a bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Try harder next time. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Goes back to eating, you guessed it, a pickle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> a big, fat, juicy pickle. Um, madness. He, he kind of looks confused. He's not a big pickle fan, you know. And she looks at him with bedroom eyes while eating the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> like she notices that people look at her, so she knows that. So you just eating that whole pickle, aren't you? <laughs> and she like literally, deliberately deep throats the pickle. Before biting a piece off. <laughs> Guess it's like, yeah. Huh. I they eat more aggressively them. when I hear some dumb stuff. <laughs> she's here to be- she's a bard, guys. This is what a bard does. <laughs> she does pickles. What? Yeah, I was about to say, the bard- well, now the, I gotta the, the, the mom need to never choose that class. <laughs> So, oh. Yuffie eats her pickle while waiting for someone else to say something. Uh, I mean, Tori, Tori speaks up, I guess, upon watching this very weird interaction. <laughs> um, like, well, I also had a weird dream, but I didn't. Well, maybe I recognize the person in the dream. She was kind of creepy, I guess. I mean, it's creeped me out. 
but this woman, I don't remember a lot, but I, I'm wondering, would she know who Hell is, like, because I, I, she doesn't know about her origin. She doesn't know about her origin. Um, yeah. If you want to make a religion check real quick, I can tell you. All right. Let's, let's figure this out. Yeah. So yeah, she recognizes she would the lady. She would. She would. She would recognize the lady from like, you know, like scary stories about what happens if you don't die valiantly, and you know. Okay, so she, she actually eventually recalls the name of this person. She's she's from horror stories. Bad, bad stories about what happens to people when they don't make it out. To go to the underworld. That's who I saw in my dream. God, it sounds like you guys, like, smoked some, like, bad shit or something before you went to bed. <laughs> well, I do burn plants. I think you burned the wrong sage. <laughs> you know, uh, so he label. says, what about you? Did you have a dream? I mean, yeah. I, I'm gonna need y'all to hold on for one quick second. My dog is doing something really weird. Okay. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you go. Oh, it's not me, Ma. No, my Mima is upstairs. Being a good uh, girl. Yeah. He was just doing something really weird. He was like staring at me in the corner <laughs> while like look at his lips like he got into something. Um just wanted the belly rub. Okay. I'm back. Sorry. So Yuffie's like, I mean, yeah, I had a dream, but like <sighs> So, like, in my dream, there was, like, this weird th thing with a bunch of circles, I guess. And, like, there's this lady. And, like, she was cool and all. At least she looked cool. Hey, Mimo. She had, like, long hair. And... There was like a, she had a lot of falcon motifs, and I don't know. Okay, could uh Beyond roll a religion check? Yeah. To figure out. Okay. Okay, where you at? Where is that? Where's button? Where's button? Okay. What I get. What are you trying to religion check? Um, who her, um, who the individual that she had a dream about is. Oh, Falcon Motifs, uh, the Vanir goddess Freya. Okay. So, so he know he knows that, okay. Yeah. Because you, you specifically did a religion check on Yuffie's. No, no, no. So you only know Yuffie's for sure. Okay. Yep. Can I do with the other ones too, or is, has that passed? You can. Okay, I won't do it for the other two. Cause I know, I know. Didn't Tori straight up say the goddess hell? Yeah. 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 So you only have to do one more. Okay. Okay. So with an eight team, you know Why that Magnus. Magnus in his dream would have seen the god the the god uh Euler who is the god of the hunt in winter. Okay. I like making a smart character because he's figuring this out. <laughs> <laughs> the other one's stupid. And just, why are you sitting on my hip? So you kinda all talk about your dreams. And, you know, there are various different types of feelings towards it. 
but obviously not everyone is aware of what their dream means. So, it may be up to those who kind of understand it better to introduce what, any theories or anything as to what the dreams may mean. Okay, um, Mion says, <clears throat> I'm a hermit by choice, and so explains that he is pretty religious. And he says that everybody who has had a dream has dreamed about some God that they, some God. And he says, you may not be the, um, the offspring of said God covering his early tracks, <laughs> but maybe we are some way connected. And then he brings up the rock glowing when you touched it to specific symbols that we all had the dreams about. Hmm. Hmm. Roxas, so you don't get the fuck. Well, that's kind of disconcerting. Wow. He looks at me and he says, ah, yes, she's from hell. You'll be out. <laughs> well, I mean... Hmm. Did you guys in your dreams kind of see, like, a weird, like, oval thingy? <laughs> I saw a few oval things. Magnus nods his head. He's like, yeah, actually, I did. Stop. Stop. Like floating and like orbiting. Come here. It was very strange. Um, in my dream, the oval thingy, I've seen it before. Like in real life. Where? It's in this village nearby called um Wodenstag is there it's like etched there they seen it with my eyes you all said well since we all have seen something similar why don't we head over I mean what else do we have to do I'm pretty far from my home and my house is in that general direction, probably. I mean, fair point. I suppose we can go. Yeah, Makes I got sense. nothing better to do. The gods are pointing us, I suppose. Oh, but I have a job to do. I mean, we can <laughs> go and write you a letter. Well, you can do your job on the way. I'm sure we'll find somebody. Fine. I'll go. I guess. Okay. I, I think you guys need me. <laughs> I think you need me. I think you guys need me. And she's just kind of sitting there. She, like, adjusts her boobs. And it's just like... <laughs> Like, when she said that, she was, like, adjusting her boobs and her shirt. Like, I think you guys need me. <laughs> These things are a persuasion tool, in case you didn't know. Hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, facts. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all decide that you're going to head to Old Stag. During the discussion, it comes up that Wodenstag does require a little traveling via boat. But Oof. Yuffie just straight up is like, I know a guy who owes me. <laughs> we can go take his boat. We don't even have to ask. We just take it. Are you sure? Yeah. And if he gets mad, then I'll just be like, you remember that the, the last four times when you said you'd pay me later? Okay, if you're confident. I am confident, because I can kick his ass. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's just Don't a sailor me. with some oars. I can fight him. This is what happens. 
<laughs> when you sleep with a really submissive guy, <laughs> you know what you can do. Beyond says, well, if you have a way, I'm sure. I have a will and a way. Beyond stands up and then imagines us throwing a chair at one of the random people in here. What? <laughs> what? what? Just beam some random child in the back of the head with the chair. Is he, is he imagining <laughs> it or does he do it? He's imagining it. Okay, good. Thank God. <laughs> He, he imagines that he throws a chair and all chaos breaks loose. <laughs> looks over at him. He's like, dude, what are you, what are you doing over there? Why are you just standing there? <laughs> and he's just like, and Beyonce says, just, oh, just trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. Imagine how nice it would be if we figure it out. Oh, okay. Sounds <laughs> safe, but okay. <laughs> so you all decide to go on this journey haphazard haphazardly yes most literally but it's fine ain't no one crying not yet is that my Mimi? <laughs> Mimi? Liam go away oh my god <laughs> Mimi think I was trailing Mimi! Mimi, come me! Okay, just put your characters on the on the dock somewhere. It doesn't fuck it. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Wow, you got, you got real oh big. my god! What happened to her? That, that, that's how. Uh... Gods are angry. <laughs> she she angered. <laughs> She just expanded. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. She got big. <laughs> okay, oh, alright. She had a little episode in spite. So y'all. Uh, be honest, sis that sits, no. stands in horror watching. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go, Liam. Liam, go away. Alright, then I draw off, but okay. Alright, so y'all are on the dock. It's starting to get to be like the evening now, and like people are like leaving and they're minding their own business. So Yuffie legit just walks on the dock and like she she has people to say hello to her and whatnot. And like ask her what she's doing tonight, and she's just like, Go away, I'm working here. <laughs> I got better things to do. And then, like, she looks back at the party and she's like, he has a foot fetish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Liam, go away! I'm gonna tell mom. Yeah, like, straight up drags every guy who talks to her. Um, <laughs> so, she ends up, like, walking around, like, leaning over and trying to, like, read... The names on the boats until she finds the boat that's got this guy's forlorn wife's name on it. She's just like, tisk tisk tisk. Mm. What an awful guy. Oh, uh, where is this guy? I don't know. He's probably home with his wife. Oh, what an awful dude. Yeah, like, I'm blatantly a prostitute. Like, there you go. There's men for you. I know you're a guy, but, like, we're not talking about you, so it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Okay, so we're just gonna take his boat. There's nothing stopping us, and he owes me... He owes me, like, a thousand gold pieces. Jesus Christ! We all touches his pocket and feels the nine gold pieces he has. <laughs> <laughs> Imagines a thousand. Imagines a thousand, and then he's like, eh, too much of a burden. <laughs> Liam, I'm literally gonna throw something at you. Go. 
<clears throat> so <sighs> yeah, so to get this guy's boat and she just kind of walks over to the boat and kicks it and she's just like well it's like a rowboat how do you make a boat move you like row Does it does everybody know how to yeah I think so it's called a rowboat a paddle water I'm not doing that I mean it's not that hard I'm not doing that the boys can do that Mine's still okay <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna argue <laughs> Well, yeah, he says we all, Bjorn agrees and says we all steal in a man's boat. I don't think we had time to. <laughs> We're not stealing out. it. He owes me. I'm going to leave him a note. And I owe you. I'm literally going to say, I'm going to write on the note. I'm going to put it right here where his boat would be. See, that's his nameplate right there on like the little thingy, the, the the piece of wood that his boat's tied to. I'm gonna put a note right there, and it's gonna say, You owe me. You still dear, owe me. Dear Gustav, and she's like writing this as she's saying it. She's like, Dear Gustav, consider 100 gold written off your debt. I'm borrowing your boat. You're not a good fisherman anyway. You told me that yourself. See you next Saturday. Heart. Yuffie. Oh my god. And she like... <laughs> she like pins it there. And she's like, see, right there, plain as day. Okay. Let's go. And she gets in the boat. Let's go. Let's party. Let's go. Let's go. Everyone gets in the Everyone fucking boat. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, we're trying to speed run through this. Um, I'm just gonna laugh imagining my boy's lanky ass legs. <laughs> he looks like a cricket. He looks like a fucking cricket. <laughs> So they all in the boat. They all up in here in this boat. And eventually, you arrive in Woden Stag. And I'm going to show you where it is on the map. It should be there. It should exist. Fancy. So you're on the river. You're like, give me my player tab. Stop this. <laughs> you see this river here? You go along the river. Get, get, get off the map. Get off the map. I'm going along the river. And then you end up in Wodenstag, down river. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, because I low key didn't know how to get rid of him. Okay. So, you arrive in Wodenstag, and when you arrive, it is oddly quiet. Oh, boy. Oh, ass women coming. Bring your bring 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 your characters over here, where Yuffie is. Over here, over here, over here. Liam, go. I'm legit texting mom right now. All right, we might witness a fight real quick, so everybody. Oh boy. Okay, well then I'll come tell mom. <clears throat> Hold on. Hey. Hey. No, my dog is barking at something. Oh. <laughs> I thought I saw my dog. I just go, hey, you. You better stop. He did. Oh. Man, what a quiet town. What a quiet place. Some day right here. <laughs> hmm. Who is this Liam that she speaks of? <laughs> Not sure. I've never heard of this god. Liam? <laughs> Liam? <laughs> <laughs> Here, you want to see Magnus do a handstand? No. That's not what we're doing right now. <laughs> no, Golf <she's> clap. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to power run through this. Beyond looks at like the seven foot handstand. (laughs) (laughs) So as you all come into Wodenstad, you notice that it is very, very quiet. Never. But as you come in, you see that the village is left in absolute disarray. Overturned carts, blood everywhere. Shit. It's not good. And the blood's fresh. And Ooh. it seems to be still and quiet right now. So, what would you like to do? I would like to make a perception check. Beautiful. To see if there's still any danger nearby, because everything looks super fresh. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, now you're all bad. Alright, so you would notice in the house directly north of you guys, you can kind of see through, like, a broken window that there's a a family kind of huddled together, hiding. Um, Magnetory? Oops. You know what? I'm sorry. Oof. Um... Bjorn would notice the same thing with his 10. I'm sorry. And Magnus would notice uh, a dead body that is not human kind of laying up ahead. Um, it looks kind of rotten. And you can see some like skeletal bits that are like blatantly out in the open. Hmm. Um, he's like, yo, guys, there's a, there's a dead body over there. So bright. I don't like it. Okay. Beyond, in his um, imagination, imagine just running to the center of the town and screaming at the top of his lungs. Come, come out here and die. <laughs> but he doesn't. <laughs> no. Man, this boy's got a wild imagination. So he, he has, uh, he's chaotic. Uh, he's chaotic neutral, so he has his moments. As he does that, no, he he's imagining it. Oh, oh okay. Well, <laughs> as you're investigating Magnus, and you see that there's that dead body, this fucker runs out and just lets out a, a oh, almost shit. like a they battle call. Damn. Oh boy. Okay, so so you know what? Tor- Tori sees the people inside the home, right? Through the broken window? Yeah. Okay, so Tori, she she just kind of like peers in through the window and she she just gestures to the family to stay put. I'll come back later. I'm not an enemy even though I might look it, but it's fine. I'll be back. Stay put. And then she just regroups. Because zombies. Ugh. So how much movement do they have? <laughs> they're just they're just charging right now. Like bulls? Mm. Yeah, they came they came out at the rally of a bally, a battle cry. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't want to say that right now. I don't like this. So that boy ran 150 feet in a circle. <laughs> Me too. And they're just it's... now they're just kind of sauntering there like zombies, like doing the zombie sway thing. Oh boy. So we'll before I have everyone <laughs> before I have everyone roll initiative, I will let everyone kind of like get into position and I'll allow like initial attacks. Okay. Yep, before you roll initiative. Okay, but before before that, Tori, just even though it's blatantly obvious, she points toward all the dead bodies and she's like, guys, there's a bunch of draw girls. To and, let you know. <laughs> and Yuffie's like, yeah, I think we can see that. <laughs> Magnus just goes, he's like, I couldn't tell. 
Thanks for opening my eyes. So you guys are allowed to move your total of 30 feet and make one action before I make you roll initiative. Ah. But uh, Bjorn has this thing called, uh, what is it called, what is it called, it's called, uh, it's called, uh, give me a motherfucking second while I figure out what it's called, um, unarmed movement. Okay. I get extra 10 feet while you are not wearing building a shield, which he is not wearing any armor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> how far? How far is it from this boy to uh, to this? Okay. What about this? What this? Damn! I can go anywhere. Damn! Fine. All right. So uh, Beyond runs up. Should should I be stupid? No, well, I'm stupid. I I mean you're a monk, so. So, be stupid. Monks are very hand-to-hand -hand combat usually. Yeah, and yeah. squishy. Yeah. All right. I'm a. Uh, I've beyond that remembers he is not a tank. So he runs in front of Zambi too. Okay. All right, and he is preparing to attack Zambi too. All right, roll with, an attack. With his bare hands. Okay. All right, how do a uh, bare-handed roll? Here, hold on. Turn on the Martial arts. You can use dexterity instead of strength for attack. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, so for an, just an unarmed strike, you're gonna just roll one d four. Jesus. Yep, and then okay. and then add your dex to it. Okay, my total dex or my bonus? Your your modifier, your plus whatever. That will be the big four in the box, correct? Yes. Okay, so now then I also have something that makes my punches, uh, what is it called? Key and power strikes. Starting at level six, your unarmed strikes count as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance. Okay. I don't think that's, I don't think that's important in this fight yet, actually. Yeah. Okay, so roll 1d4. Uh-huh. Oh, no, using my ability. I rolled a one. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um, Fated, the threads of fate unravel. Yep. When you roll a one on attack, ability check, or save throw, you can reroll. All of us have that. Okay. Don't okay. worry, we know. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. I knew I was going to. Okay, so add my dexterity to it. That's a five. All right, so 
five points of automatic damage. Okay. Uh -huh. No, I don't want that. How how math? Uh, it's about to get a little more math heavy too, so I apologize. Well, for your character, that's your job, not mine. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's cool. I was so, like, that's how that works. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, so I have something called martial training. I think so. I think it's called martial training. Yes, when I strike unarmed, I get a bonus action. Okay. So I use that bonus action that I get from that first strike to attack him again. So okay. I'm do four. Sweet. I got a f four. So, so then that's eight. eight. Yeah. And then I use my extra attack to hit him again. Okay. I roll a three. So that's seven. And then I use my bonus from an um, unarmed attack to hit him again. Okay. And that's also seven. Awesome. That's an ample load of damage. Kiss how it barely went down. There. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So. That is not bad for no key expended. Yeah, and we haven't even rolled initiative yet. Oh, yeah. Alright, so what would everyone else like to do? So we can make an attack, right? Yeah, you can you can do all your movement, and you can do an action, and any other actions that you can justify using traits and whatnot. Okay, so... Tori already made her move. Uh -huh. Um, the full amount of feet. And she's she's gonna target Draugr One. She's gonna build up a sacred flame. It feels like that'd be super effective and yeah. dead. Okay. Yeah, she's probably she's probably gonna throw that at Draugr One. Okay. And should I roll that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have to exceed on a DC saving throw now. I don't want the mancer thing. Just let me do my shit. Two. Uh, it's a dexterity save. Hey. <laughs> All right, so oh it gosh. it definitely takes that um, ten radiant damage, and when it gets hit with the radiant damage, you can see that like it literally howls being hit with radiant damage. Hey. <laughs> All right. Do you have any bonus actions or anything? Ah. Uh... Well, can she cast a cantrip? Um, no, a cantrip counts as an action. Wait, is it a cantrip? Oh unless God, it specifically it? says false life. Like, unless it specifically says, like, bonus action in the description. Uh, it's like a... Uh, here, let me... It says you can cast mage armor on yourself at will without expending a spell slot on the tarot card. Um, so that's like no, that would still end up being an action because it doesn't say it's a bonus action. Okay, uh, I'll just leave it for some other time then. Okay. Yeah, I think I think she's good. Magnus, um, he's gonna pull out his longbow and take an aim at. How do you pronounce that? Dra Draugr. Draugr. Mm -hmm. um, Three. Okay. All right. Oh, buddy, you're supposed to be proficient in this. <laughs> so you shoot this arrow, and this arrow literally spirals off into the window of a house over here. 
No! How are you that off, you idiot? And all you know is that you hear, like, a, a, a yelp of pain. No! <laughs> that's that's uh, very unfortunate. I took that back. He didn't do that. <laughs> you can't be too awake! Okay. So... Let me see. What is the rain? Okay. So, my girl Yuffie, she, she kind of fluffs her hair a little and, like, goes to, like, bring her hand out and points at driver number four. And you hear this language. It's, it's, it's the language of um, Infernal just erupts her from her as she says, You're too ugly to exist! Oh my god. Oh my god! As she casts vicious mockery. Jesus. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna exceed on this saving <laughs> throw. Let's see. Oh yeah, I failed that. Oof. So the Strauger takes. Team take six six damage. Not many damage, but it damage. All right, now I need everyone to roll. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta open it. Make sure you select your token before you roll for initiative, or it doesn't count. Oh, gotcha. Don't you love rolling a zero initiative, Draugr? Like, son. Damn. Son! Wow. You dead. Mm. Oh, he rolled a 13 somehow. The only one that's that's doing it. The only one that didn't take damage is probably why. <laughs> mm, I'm sorry, dude. Alright, we are officially in combat. So, Magnus, top of the round. Alright. Um, well, your boy is gonna cast a little spell to try and, uh, you know, help the gang out. Kinda. Hopefully with some damage. Hopefully. Hopefully. Ugh. Oh, Jesus. That was me. That was my... You know, my, my thing. Uh, yeah. well, it's, this is more of a... Okay, I'm, he's gonna cast Spike Growth. Okay. Directly onto, like, on Dragger 3, because if I'm reading it right, he could cast it underneath somebody, and they just... It takes two D4 piercing damage. Or would it have to be in front of them? Hold on. Okay, so... Okay, so he's not going to take any damage right now. However, yeah. that spell literally affects this entire radius. <laughs> oh, so that's including your allies. Okay. Alright, I, I hope everyone heard that because... Yeah. I gotta make the shape now. Okay, so that's an issue. Okay. Um that 
that's 20, that's 20. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so it's clear that this is going to smack me. But I have it a only, move that... It only works if, like, they move, right? It, no, it, it works if they move into the area. And okay. your party member, they're not going to know it's there because it specifically says it camouflages. So, like, on Bjornstad's turn, he's going to have to make a wisdom throw to see if he knows if it's there or not. And if he moves, then, yeah, it's going to hit him. Okay. Like, this is literally the radius that it's in. Okay. Do you have any bonus actions or anything you can take? Uh, no. Okay. Are you gonna move? No, he's gonna stay there. Alright, Bjorn's dad, before you do anything, I need a wisdom saving throw. Okay, so... I just click my wisdom? No, you go under saving throws, which is under your proficiency bonus, and you click that wisdom. Because I specifically said saving throw. Okay. Oh, saving throws with wisdom. Uh, and... Uh, what's your spell save, DC, Jess? My spell save? Okay. Okay, that's 16. Alright, then that means Bjornstad is not aware of the spikes in the area. Okay. You said, uh, but I rolled a 17, it's 16. No, you don't, you don't have advantage or disadvantage, so I take the first number. No, no, I'm just, I'm just being, <laughs> I'm just trying to, uh, Okay, so for my first attack, I am going to expand one. Wait, so m moving. So with us fighting, count no. is moving. No. Okay, am I already inside the spike circle? It doesn't count if you're fighting, but if you okay. you're gonna move because you are within twenty feet. Okay. Yeah. So. I'm just so I'm. Is it when you move inside the circle or move into the circle? It's literally whenever you move in the radius of the circle. Okay. So if right, he stays cool. where he is, but he wouldn't know that. Yeah, no, I'm going to make him move. He would not know that there's spikes yeah. unless somebody yells out there's spikes, and then, even then he got a hero. Okay, so. For my first action, this turn, I'm going to use my... I'm going to expend one key. Uh -huh. Do something called Fury of Blows. Which okay. Immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend... Oh, I gotta attack first. Alright, so I'm about to attack first. Those are all unarmed attacks. Yep. yep. So I'll do six. And then it's kind of hard switching back and forth from the character sheet. Oh, wow. I was just making a separate window. Oh, you genius. Um, so, where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Um, Fury Blows. So you can spend one key point to make two arm strikes as a bonus action. So I'm going to expend one of my key. Didn't you already I'm... expend a key point? Yep, I'm at nine key now. Okay. So I can attack him twice with the D4s.
So that's four and four. Wow. So that's eight damage for each die. So that's 16 in all. Okay. Then I'm going to use my secondary act turn to attack him once with my hand axe. Okay. Which is a simple weapon. Just just roll a hand axe attack. Okay, so your hand axe misses as you're beating him around with the unarmed attacks. However, you do manage to get 16 points of damage in total. Okay. So... I think I still get one bonus action because it's a simple weapon. Let me make sure. Oh, okay. You practice martial arts mastery. Okay, share this. No, 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 no. Share it. Um. So, yeah, it says uh, any simple melee weapon that does not have two hands. I can gain the final benefits while you are. Oh, oh never mind. It says only wielding a uh, monk weapon. And I don't think it acts as a monk weapon, so never mind. Well, if a hand axe is a simple melee weapon, yeah, it says, and monk weapons, which are short swords and any simple melee weapon. Oh, so I do get a bonus. You get one more unarmed strike. Yeah, okay. So, after Bjorn swings and misses his hand axe on Jogger, he quickly hits him in. Uh, okay, if this is a nat twenty, do draugers have nuts? <laughs> well, you're not rolling any d twenties, so. No, I'm okay. Damn. Unarmed strike just like auto hits. Okay. And you roll the nat ones. <laughs> so, uh, it's five, so I just yeah. punch him. I just punch him in the face. After my hand axe misses, I then punch him in the face. <laughs> Good job. That boy is getting whipped. Oof, ripped. Okay. Yes. Um, because I'm the power of the DM, um, I'm going to nerf this a little bit. And this Draugr, Draugr 3, who has no damage, um, his, his the, the soul that is bound to his body kind of... It, it's time there runs up so he literally while this is going on just collapses to the ground in a heap of just bones <sighs> because yeah I need to nerf this <laughs> alright Yuffie let me see Yuffie 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 let me see. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do anything to... I'm going to do my favorite spell. <laughs> oh, God. So, Yuffie... You want to summon a pickle again? No. <laughs> no. So, Yuffie... Raises her hands up epically and just yells, Toll of the Dead! <laughs> On um, Draugr 4. Please work, please work. So as she casts Toll of the Dead, you guys just hear this sudden, like, bonging, just ringing through the air of, like, a deep, deep, deep church bell. Oof. Um, and whether or not it does damage this thing is about to be determined. My fucking mouse is lagging. What a time. 
wisdom saving throw. I don't think it did it, but we'll see. Hey, did it! Okay, so, um, this bonging literally causes, like, blood to start to seep from the draugr's ears, and it's, like, blood and, like, pus mixed together, and it's, it's gross, and you're just like, wow, I thought this guy was dead, but, like, <laughs> that's still graphic. <laughs> it's, like, the, just the bong, bong. Seem to burst whatever eardrums may be there. So I have to roll. Gotta roll for that necrotic damage. <laughs> if it's missing any hit points, hit which points. it is, so I get to roll a d12. Um, how many d12? D uh, okay, so 2d12, because she's 10th level. Mm, yeah, that looks right. Hey, 22 points of damage! Oh my gosh. Look at my little girl, she's doing so good! I'm so proud, my favorite spell. <laughs> Literally, I love Toll of the Dead so much. Like, the visual I get from it is so satisfying. Fantastic. Okay, Tori, it's your turn. Okay, well, Tori definitely likes the reaction the Sacred Flame, you know, did for the Drago, so she, she's gonna do that again. Okay. Sacred only five. Well, it's still got a roll to see if it even hit. Draugr page, why did you close? I need you. <laughs> Gotta do a dex saving throw. Hey, it still hit. Thank God. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, five radiant damage. I might have to, like, nurse and nerf this hardcore. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Alright, Draugr 4. Draugr 4. He is gonna try to waddle forward. Just a few spaces, so one... Two. So now, where's the spike thing at? The creature moves into or within the area. It takes 2d4 piercing damage for every 5 feet it travels. Okay, Jess, so I literally need you to roll 4d4. I need to roll uh, 2d4? No, 4d4. 4d4. Because oh. it, yeah, it, tra it traveled 10 feet. Alright. He's actually do oh, okay. Twelve is okay. Twelve. Just from walking in the spikes that it can't even see. And it's too stupid to try to look for what's hurting it. Because it's dead. What a dumb dumb. Don't don't feel that. Dion <laughs> is too stupid to actually notice that this thing is howling and painful walking on the ground. <laughs> okay, Draugr 2 is going to try to attack Bjorn. Okay. Alright. He is going to go to bite you. So it like, it unhinges its jaw and like lurches forward to try to bite down on your forearm. Okay. With a 12, just it's 12 hit. Okay, so... AC, armor class. Armor class is 14. Well, that doesn't hit. I also have something that, to where uh, I have an invisible veil when our arm class is equal to 13 plus dexterity, so there's 7. It wouldn't hit. I got like 17 armor. Okay. Plus another armor bonus, but I'm going to say that for when I actually 
I need it. That's Draugr. Draugr can only move 20 feet. So... He only moved 20 feet. And then he stopped. Magnus, is your turn. Tori waves. <laughs> Alright. So, uh... Kill him. Kill him dead. <laughs> Kill him dead. I hope so. That's what that's what Yuffie says. She's like, kill him, kill him again. Don't fuck up with a longbow again. Don't do something stupid this time. Uh, he's gonna try and redeem himself. Okay. Gotta do it for longbow. pleasure, the tiefling. <sighs> do it for your girlfriend. I think a single tear rolls down. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks of his girlfriend. Uh, and he's gonna go for. Dry, the the one by Tori. Okay, smart idea. Oh, Ooh, that hit! That hit, son! That hit! Roll for damage. Thank God. Yeah. That hit! Roll for damage. Ooh, twelve yes. damage. Um, <laughs> doesn't mean anything that since he has a proficiency in uh the longbow. Well, it would have hit either way. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> I mean, I was going off of the 19, not the 24, because you guys don't have advantage or disadvantage, like, just in general, unless you, like, okay. tell me you're proficient in something. All right. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It would have hit either way. Yeah. Oh, I need to read more. All right. Is that it for your turn? Are you going to move or anything? Um, he, no, he's not gonna. Okay. Bjorn stab. Okay. So, I want to synergize with this trap. Okay. But, can I do a wisdom throw to see if I notice it yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yo, if I do hit it, then I want to try and synergize with it. Uh, you do a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, I got that this time. Jess, what's your DC? 16. Okay, so 16 on the dot, you, you see the, the difference in the regular terrain versus these magical spikes. Okay, thank you. Alright, so... I'm going to attack Draugr 2 with a regular unarmed strike. Okay. I'm going to punch him in he face. I'll do one, so I'll do five damage. Okay. i use my bonus to punch him in he face again. Just calculate the whole damage at the end. Okay. You you that are, uh, okay, so that's one. Okay, so I'm at so five then seven okay then i'm going to punch him in the face again so then i'm going to use my fury of blows here expand another key point yeah, I'm expending another key point. You can see the bar. Mm-hmm. I'll figure out how to do that. Okay. Then, um, what? That was Fury of Blows. I hit him twice. Listen, let me find it again. I want to make sure. But where the, where the dick is this at? Okay. Yep, you spend one key to make two art strikes. Okay, so then one, two, so eight, five, and then since I use Fury of Blow, I'm going to try to use one of my open hand techniques. Yep, God. 
I can manipulate my own Q and whenever you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by flurry of blows, you can impose one of the following effects. I'm saying that the the Draugr must make a strength saving throw. If it fails, I can push it back 15 feet away from me. Okay. So what I need you to do is you need to roll strength and then it's going to roll strength. Can I roll dexterity instead, or do I have to roll strength? It, you want it to be strength, so it has to be strength. Okay, all right. Give me two stakes of a hamster's tail. Strength. Okay, so you manage to push the dra Draugr 15 feet away from you. So it sure. is going to end up taking just, you have to do 6d4 damage now. Gotcha. And then, Eric, you need to calculate all the damage you did. Alright, I am, alright. Okay, so that's 11. <laughs> so just did 11 with the spell. I did 31. Oh. <laughs> so close. What? So he is like oh. beaten, but still standing somehow. Oh my god. Alright. Are you going to move at all, or are you going to stay put? Eric? I'm staying put. I use both of my actions. Alright. Oh. All right, my girl Yuffie. Um, she. Oh, what the stupid. She's going to cast Vicious Mockery on the Draugr that's over bothering Tori. So you hear from her cute little body erupt the, the infernal voice once again and she says, Get away from my friend! <laughs> and casts the vicious mockery. Uh, now I gotta just fucking switch to the Draugr and this... <clears throat> Wisdom. He failed. He failed. Ha ha ha. He failed. Sucker. <laughs> he only did four damage, though. Can't even believe. Better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, Tori. Okay, so Tori notices that this jogger is definitely a lot closer than it was before. So, she's yeah. going to use, instead, she's going to pull out her crossbow. I'm going to try and shoot it in the head. Get it down quick. Right in the face. Why is it not clicking? Oh, I'm Alright, that hit. Roll for damage. Yay! Four. Four. <laughs> no! What a disappointing number. <laughs> hey, that's the maximum I could roll, so that hurts my feet. Yeah, but you can get multiple hits in. Yeah. yeah so. The is legit. I like this character. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool thing about monks. It's small damage, but many, many hit. Yeah. And right. she can she can move real quick, right? Yeah, she can move. Okay, so she she's just gonna <laughs> probably in the very bad direction she's gonna move. About here. Okay. Yeah. So Draugr number four. <laughs> <laughs> Mm 
Okay, Draugr number four is going to move up ten feet to attack Magnus, but first Jess needs to roll 4d4 of them spikes. Mm-hmm. And then this Draugr, as it's taking these spike damages, it doesn't seem to react as it just wails its arm back and slashes forward towards Magnus with its claws. Ooh, Ooh it misses terribly. <laughs> it like trips on one of the claws and stumbles forward a little bit. Almost loses its footing, but it recovers. Oh my god, this is dumb, dumb. <laughs> Alright, Draugr 2 is going to stay put. <laughs> Draugr 1. Oh boy. <laughs> Go ahead, boy, I walked. Oh, Draugr 2 ain't going. <sighs> Draugr 1 moves up to Tori because she's exactly 20 feet away. Oh god. And goes to slash at her with his wailing zombie claws for a 12. For a 12, Lenny. It just misses. Alright, so it falls a little short, kind of ripping some uh, fabric away from your clothes, and you know that that was a close call. Very close. All right, top of the round, Magnus. All right, so Magnus is going to try and um, get this guy, Draugr number four, with his dagger. Wait, I take that back. He's going to use acid splash. <laughs> okay. All right, that's not a, that's not a lot, but hey. <laughs> It's gotta make a DC save. Let's see what the acid does. It's just a little bit of acid. Ooh, and it hits. So the acid splashes and seems to start to melt the bo- at the bones of the Draugr, but it doesn't seem to react. All right, and then um, Magnus is gonna he's gonna take a step step or two back. <laughs> uh huh. Bjornstad. Okay. Bjorn notices that uh, his friend, his newly acquired friend, is in trouble. So he says, fuck the damage, and he runs to hit Draugr 1. Okay. So that's 25 feet from here, but I'm out the circle. I moved five feet to get out the circle, so that means I should be hit once, correct? Yep, with 2d4. Alright. Just roll a 2d4. 2d4. Alright, that's a 6. 4 damage. Ah, oh, you hurt me. Why are you doing <laughs> Sorry, bro. So I got 71. Oh no, <laughs> what happened to Amber? Amber. Is, it, is everything all right? I don't know. I'm trying to find it out. Okay. Well, just go ahead and continue with your turn. All right. Well, so now I continue to run over there. Uh, yeah. So then I attack the Draugr with my axe, my hand axe. Okay. So, so bam. Uh, that hit. Roll for damage. Can I roll for damage again? You just click hand axe there in the chat. Ah, stupid. All right. Six, then I expend one key. So I'm at seven key now. Are you going to change it? 
That's seven key. Not the fuck. Why did the drugger say that? <laughs> <laughs> the drugger said the emoji. <laughs> Why are you hitting me, man? <laughs> right? That's what yeah. <laughs> So then that's 2D4. Okay. <laughs> so plus eight. So I do. Jesus, I got the worst possible and the best part. So that's plus four each. So plus eight. So hold on, I'm gonna I'm still do all the math. Okay. And then I'm using my pushback ability to try and push them back fifteen feet. Giving okay. her some space to escape. Here is my strength roll. Boop. Damn. Oh, you don't manage to push him back at all. He just pushes that, back that's, against that's you. you. That's you, not the Draugr. No, that's the Draugr. That's you. <laughs> nah, no. All right. Oh, how strong is your fucking person? How strong is the Draugr? I mean, he got, what, eight bonus in strength? Yeah, that's all the Draugr are, is they're strong. They have yeah. negatives and other things. I should have done dexterity. Okay, so what's the total damage from your turn? Oh, my bad. The total damage... Is uh... I'm just moving over here because I want to see his health bar. Okay. I like how we checkmated Draugr too. <laughs> if he moved, he died. <laughs> What's the damage? Oh, uh, I did 19 damage. Okay. All right, so... Yuffie kind of sees that the situation's being handled over there. So, she... Is gonna cast. <sighs> hmm. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. What spell do I want to do? Uh, hmm. No, she's just gonna go forward with her good old rapier. She's gonna whip that rapier out. It's time. It's time to get feisty. So she whips her rapier out and does some, like, swish, swish, swish things with it. Me too. And then goes to, like, strike it in an X pattern. So down to one corner and then back up and down again. So swish. Oh, it just hit. What a fucking miracle. <laughs> For eight piercing damage. Amber is typing a fucking book. <laughs> oh, yeah, now it's Tori's turn, so.
girl, go back yourself up into a corner. I did all this. Go the other way. <laughs> go the other way. <laughs> go Me. this way. Literally, like, like, parkour around the building. Go around the back of the building. Pat. No, that's where I will enforce. And a time tuned. Can you imagine playing D&D &D like this? Oh yeah, that'd be so... that'd be bad. <laughs> Having to type everything. All of that for just three damage. <laughs> mm. What a sad time! Me. We're just gonna say this fucker died. Like, literally, I need to nerf this now that someone's typing. Okay. Dragger 4 is gonna stay put. Dragger 1 doesn't care. Magnus, go. Alright. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Here he goes. He's gonna take a few steps over here and... Okay, I still gonna... have, like, the boss fight, and, like... <laughs> He's gonna bring out this dagger. Uh... <laughs> that hit! <laughs> yeah? Wow. Ten is their armor class, so... Damn. He slashes. Or pierces. He slash. Right in the shoulder or something. He do good job. Good job, Magnus. I mean, the fucker's still alive, but... Hey, at least he's trying. Yeah. This thing is still kind of in that circle. Well, it's not moving, so... Oh, let me pick it. Ugh. Bjornstad. Good, <laughs> Bjornstad. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm my bad. <laughs> I heard you and I was like, all right, who's gonna move? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm still right here. I just moved him so I could see his health. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to uh, attack him barehanded and then to use my bones to attack. Oh, wrong one. I meant to do the other one. But two, and three, so that's six, seven. Then I attack him again. And then I use F Fury of Blows after I expend one key. You're using all them key points. I mean, I might as well. The fight's not going to last for too much longer. There's other encounters. Uh, yeah, but don't, I get, don't we rest? You're not going to get a long rest, no. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Well, that's my last time you know. <sighs> all right, I'm at six. I'm not touching my key. Y'all on your own from now on. I'm now useless. <laughs> um, so, uh, in total, so, I did... Uh, 
13, 14, 24, 28 damage. Come on. She's still alive, barely. One HP. Uh, just say that he chokes on his own. <laughs> yeah, he died. He died. For the sake of time. I bust his jaw off and it hit a rock and the rock fell and hit him. He did. Alright, and then my girl's gonna cast. No, she's gonna go in with the rapier for the sake of time. Swish, swish, swish. It hit, thank God. Only six piercing damage. What a sad time. How much does this thing got? It has 20 left. Oh, that's not too bad. Tori. Hope Amber's been paying attention. Mm, me? Yeah, she's paying attention. Okay. I see the ruler going. <laughs> That's it. Okay. All right. Driver Force is gonna stand there. Magnus, go. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna try his dagger. It hit. Roll for damage. Heck yeah. Six. Love. <laughs> I mean, it's something. We're getting there. We're getting there. Even Yuffie. That's six damage. They're loving. <laughs> Okay, Bjorn's dad. Alright. Bjorn's dad runs over. Let me make sure I can do it. I should be able to do it. Because it should only be like 30, uh, 25. Bjorn's dad runs up. Um, the spell, I believe, only had a 10 minute time on it, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it did. It gone. It gone. Thank God. Right. No, runs up and punches him. In. Four times he does reg no wait no he can only do it twice. But then he punches him twice. Four plus eight is eleven. I'll do eleven damage. I only see one roll. Yeah, because uh action. Oh, okay. Look at me, I'm playing the game right. <laughs> He's still alive. He still live. Yuffie, oh, Yuffie yeah. gonna, Yuffie gonna strike him with her rapier again. She hit him. He dead. Heck yeah. He dead. For the people in the back. <laughs> yeah. All right, How's good job. Who got shot in the leg? Good job. He dead. He came to the wrong neighborhood. Amber like can't even hear my narration. Like, what do I do? I don't know. Can't she? No. Never mind. I was like, oh, there's a voice chat in the. The struggle of designing a session around people who are supposed to show up. 
Mm. Oh, for session three, I will be running late because I get off at eight. That's again. fine. I would suggest everyone just like kind of like type replies in the in the chat on roll twenty for a minute because Amber can't obviously even can't even hear talking. Um, if you want to do a two parter, I'm chill with that. Yeah, I am too. <clears throat> How many one shots do you have planned? There's a one shot that uh, just Amber, Jess, and I were gonna do when I had my week off, but I don't remember what came up, but we ended up canceling it. So oh. like I prepped that entire session. There's no way I'm throwing that away. Like it's still gotta happen. Nope. Understandable. I, something came up with me. I remember. That. I don't know what exactly happened, but. You got the BGs. Oh. No, I had a graduation party and I was like, uh, let me see. Uh, I'm I cool with there. Monday evening. Yeah, we do Monday. <laughs> Don't steal my damn thunder. <laughs> what a time. So, does this count as a long rest? <laughs> I swear, I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> every, every answer. <laughs> You're like point two seconds. <laughs> Who's the third? Who's? Well, I mean, y'all should know that we have session on Tuesday. Yeah. Who's the third? All right, cool. Monday. Um. I'm good seven. What are yeah. you doing Monday, Eric? Like around um, seven? Do you have work? No, that's why I suggested Monday because I have tomorrow okay. and Monday off. Well, 
want a buffer, man. Yeah. It's okay. I can edit the videos and, like, put them together, upload them in parts. Yeah. It fine. It fine. It fine. All right. So, it looks like we are going to be having part two. Um, literally, like, two days on Monday at 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. We can blame Discord. Yeah. Discord's the real problem in this. But yeah. Um, shit happens. But it's good we found a date within, like, a decent... Yeah, it's like a day in between. Yeah. You know, <laughs> We've already planned to like continue this at a more decent time though. Yeah, also like I have work tomorrow. Yeah, and we can actually like take less time. You don't have to nerf as hard. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was originally playing, like, on Monday, but I think I'm going in. So, it'll be good. But and even if you have work on Monday, you usually are done at, like, 6. Yeah, the only time I'm out past 6 is if I have to do something, like, with my mom or... Yeah, so, Monday 7. Yeah. Alrighty, well... 